안녕하십니까 삼본 서울삼성증과 원장 전진입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. j o n j i n of Seoul Sanborn Samsung Dental Clinic. Last year, as part of Master Prosthodontic Course, I provided a lecture on implant occlusion. It's been a year. Today, I want to talk about the implant prosthesis composition. This is the contents. I'm going to talk about the advantages and indications for implant prosthesis, difference between natural teeth prosthesis and implant prosthesis, and I'm going to talk about top-down prosthetic plan and design. First is about implant prosthesis features. Once implant is placed, implant level impression is taken, and the working model is fabricated, space evaluation is done, abutment is selected, and lab work is proceeded. Once implant level impression is taken, abutment selection is done, and lab procedure is performed. After that, prosthesis is delivered. The first option you consider to restore missing teeth is implant. In the conventional way to provide the prosthodontic treatment, you need to prep adjacent teeth. There are cases where implant treatment is impossible, and for aesthetic reasons, at times, bridge can be more favorable. The need to prep teeth is an insurmountable disadvantage in bridge treatment. The person had fractured anterior tooth. Number 11 was mobile. Looking at the pattern, I felt fulcrum over here, and fracture in the middle of the root was confirmed. In number 12, there was already implanted prosthesis, so bridge treatment was not recommended here. In panoramic image, you could not see the periaptical lesion, so immediate implant placement was decided. A traumatic extraction was performed, initial prep is done, guide pin is placed. In order to do a good job in prosthodontic treatment, you need to do surgery well, and if, to do this, you need to have a good understanding of prosthesis. So you need to make sure that the initial drill is towards the palatal side and there's labial gap. As you can see, not just visually, you just need to check the CT as well. You need to check using guide pin whether the surgery is proceeding in the right position and direction. CT was taken to check and you can see that labial gap is secured in this direction. The hole was expanded and implant was placed. Gap filling was done and healing abutment was connected. I looked at CT to check whether implant has been placed in the desired position. There are many ways to provide provisional and in this case, I prepped the extracted tooth and made shell and added resin to provide provisional. Two months later, impression was taken, shade taking photo was taken, final prosthesis was fabricated and delivered. If you look at the PA position depth uh, distance, looks okay, and abutment connection state, and uh, the prosthesis connection state looks favorable as well. Implant can also be considered for multiple missing cases, as shown on this image. In the case where number 6 and 7 are missing, in order to do RPD, there needs to be tooth alteration of 3 or 4 teeth, and you need to make surveyed crown to provide RPD, but implant treatment will be much more simple. As you can see, there's teeth missing in lower left and in lower right. There's channel to set the RPD. In number 35, there is a rest. Initial drilling is done in order to check the position and path. Guide pin was placed and panoramic image was taken. This is a final placement image. Because the bone was thin, bone graft was done together. In the panoramic image in number 36, you can see signs of decortication. 
In conventional way, pickup impression was taken and prosthesis was delivered. In the case of a dentulous patient, other than denture, the only option available is implanted treatment. Using implant, you can provide different treatment options. In order to maintain the lower full denture, implant was used, and this is widely known as shown on the image. If you place implant and provide over denture, it's very favorable for retention and you can get support. In the case of this patient, in lower right, only number 47 was remaining and the other were missing. Number 47, there was a lot of mobility and it did not help in retention at all. Because of cost and the patient wanted to receive insurance benefits as much as possible, so IARPD was planned in canine and premolar area. Number three and four implants were to be placed. Initial drilling was done and guide pin was placed to check the position and direction and x-ray was taken. I tried to make sure the implants placed in number three and four were parallel. And this is a panoramic image after placement. If you look at the premolar healing, you can see that it is not fully connected. Right after panoramic image was taken, bone profiler was used to trim the superior portion of the implant and healing abutment was connected. And after six weeks, a surveyed bridge was delivered. In conventional way, RPD was fabricated and delivered. This is intraoral photo. This patient complained of anterior teeth mobility, and because mobility was very severe, all residual teeth needed to be extracted. As for the lower, two implants were to be placed along with locators for overdenture treatment. As for upper, conventional denture treatment was going to be provided. All residual teeth were extracted and implants were placed in early placement way in the lower. This is implant section image. This is the right and left after placement. I tried to place the implants parallel to each other. As for the upper, impression for full denture treatment was taken. And for the lower, locator and housing were connected and impression was taken. This is upper denture and this is denture in the lower. Locator housing was bonded using hard lining resin intraorally. I'm going to talk about the implant prosthesis components. Implant is different from natural teeth. Between natural tooth and alveolar bone, there is PDL and mobility of 25 to 100 micron is allowable, but because bone and implant are in direct contact, there is no mobility. And the stress is concentrated on the superior part of implant. And the implant to crown ratio compared with natural tooth is less important. Just because the length of implant continues to grow does not mean increased stability. What is more important is the length of the superior crown and diameter of the implant. In the case of internal clinical connection implant, like TS, the implant and abutment margin is used to divide crown and root. So you can see the different ratio of crown and root. As mentioned in blue, just because the blue increases does not mean stability go up proportionally. Due to anatomical limitation, when it, long implants cannot be placed, you can use short implants. In general, implant prosthesis can be divided into four components, implant abutment, abutment screw, and prosthesis. And the implant serves as the root of the tooth, and the abutment goes through the gingiva, and on top of there is the final prosthesis. The implant is connected with abutment using screw, and abutment and crown is bonded using cement. After abutment is connected, and when crown is tried in, you need to take x-ray to check whether the connection is correct and whether there is any underseating. You need to check the crown margin as well. 
You can divide the implant prosthesis uh, largely into three, depending on retention type. There's screw type, cement type, and ER type. Uh, ER type is also well known as SCRP type. In the case of cement type, you cannot see the prosthesis hole, so it is used in the anterior area where aesthetics are very important. In the case of number 11, it's been quite a while since extraction was performed, and for number 12, immediate implant placement was performed. Because immediate implant placement was performed, the gap can be observed for contour augmentation. Decortication was performed, a xenograft was used, and resorbable membrane was used on top to complete the case. The screw hole is towards the labial side, therefore, cemented type prosthesis was chosen so that the screw hole can be covered in upper anterior area if the screw hole is towards the palatal and is unseen then you can provide a screw type prosthesis screw hole is not visible here therefore screw type prosthesis was delivered what is most recommended is ER type. Upper anteriors, four of them, were extracted, and eight weeks later, implant surgery was performed. You can see a lot of defect in bone, and in the lateral incisor area, implant was placed, and the area where bone is lacking, xenograft and resorbable membrane was used for contour augmentation. The screw hole direction was palatal, so ideal. An ER type of prosthesis was fabricated. Internal conical connection implant or TS type implant is not recommended for multiple screw type prosthesis. This is image of prosthesis delivery ER type before setting it's like cement type and after that it becomes like screw type. Screw hole is towards the palatal side so ER type prosthesis was delivered to explain ER type accurately, personally, I think this is screw retained after cementation. For two-piece abutment, it can be divided into hex and non-hex abutments. Hex abutment has the advantage of being able to reposition abutment. Non-hex connection is more intricate regarding abutment. I'm going to address it more deeply in the next lecture. This is hex and non-hex. There are clear advantages and disadvantages, so you need to choose accordingly to different situations. Because the space was lacking when you cannot make abutment and crown at the same time, then you can use a UCLA abutment, which is a one-piece crown prosthesis. This is a traditional skirt type prosthesis. There is one piece abutment where abutment and a screw is one piece uh, one piece abutment needs to go in entirely so there is no hex and repositioning is not possible today i've talked about the implant prosthesis for specific details so please refer to offline master course and next i'm going to talk about abutments thank you for watching